Good evening. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Guz Khan in the news this week. After an all-night rave, one man is still so smashed, he almost sets off for work without his coat. <laughs> <laughs> After attempting a style overhaul with a few Giacomo purchases, one man is relieved when his new jacket gets a positive reaction from some neutral passers-by. <laughs> And as food bank usage reaches record levels in the run-up for Christmas, Number 10 devises a plan to make sure local school children get their fair share. <laughs> <laughs> On Ian's team tonight, a broadcaster and journalist who recently cut the ribbon at the official opening of a new retirement home. Though she was a bit cross when they offered her a brochure on the way out. Please welcome <laughs> Janice Reporter. On Paul to you tonight, a comedian who recently revealed that he once bought an ex-British army tank. Sounds quite fun. But on the downside, he actually outbid President Zelensky. Please welcome <laughs> Mr Ross Noble. <laughs> we start round one. Ian and Janet, have a look at this. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the hammer the wrong way. Yeah, it's uh, the Elgin marbles. The Parthenon sculptures. Yeah. That's the police looking for Lord Elgin, going to arrest him a bit late. <laughs> so that's Mitsotakis there, the Greek Prime Minister, who came over to have a meeting with Rishi Zunak, who then cancelled it and had a complete hissy fit. I mean, he's actually known as Techi Sunak now. Do you think he was trying to change his image and appear more macho? What, so go really hard on some ancient sculptures? <laughs> Now, the government's trying to defend the fact that it's sort of really annoyed one of our allies for no reason at all. Mm. And it said um, he promised not to bring this up. And you think, have you ever met anyone Greek? <laughs> <laughs> they tend to bring this up very, very quickly. Do you want to see how the Greek media reacted to the snob? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah right. let's do it. <laughs> But for those of us who don't speak Greek... <laughs> <laughs> this is Greece, the home of diplomacy. Yeah. <laughs> Given that now you can do this uh, laser printing, why don't we just send the sculptures back and get new ones? We can make ones that look so much better without all the little bits out of them. <laughs> <laughs> then they can put up the emission charges at the British Museum and it's a win-win situation. It is, except it's free into the British Museum. Special exhibitions you have to pay. But Elgin yeah. Marbles, that's a load of old ropey old Greek shit, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's how they publicise it. Yes, yeah. that's <laughs> it, yeah. But Ian, you'll probably know, you can tell us what it means to Greek culture, the Parthenon uh, statues, rather than... Because they, doesn't, they don't mean anything to us over here, really, do they? No, I mean, it's the frieze on the top of yeah. um, the Acropolis and the Parthenon is the one in the middle. And it was all one frieze. And Elgin went over there and said to the Ottoman Empire, can I have permission to... <coughs> uh, take a few things. <laughs> uh, and then he just smashed it, took half of it home. And the idea that no one's ever minded, Byron at the time made a huge fuss. And Elgin was going to put the marbles in his garden. <laughs> the only reason the museum's got them is he went bankrupt and needed someone to buy them. Mm. I mean, that would have been a hell of a shed. Yeah. <laughs> Where's, your that? yeah. Where's Elgin? He's down there with a the head yeah, missing. He just, just <laughs> popping off like that. <laughs> But, uh, but that's the thing, you see, it was the Ottomans, wasn't it, you know? Good we... sofas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good sofas. That's what they're going to want back next. They're going to yeah. want our little puffy seats. Yeah. Yeah. Can I be honest with you? This yeah. is all mad interesting, but I don't understand anything you guys have just said. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to put it out there. I may not be a huge fan of Rishi, but this is historic. Possibly the first time ever that a European nation has had to beg a brown man for pieces of their heritage back. It's the first time. <laughs> This is the government that four days ago said, we're going to change the law over Rwanda... Yeah. ..so that we can ship people live over to Rwanda. We can't ship some old figures back anywhere. That would be against the law. Well, why don't we just ship them to Rwanda and then let the Greeks <laughs> deal with them? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Easy. Rishi didn't just stand the Greek Prime Minister up. He actively insulted him. He offered him a meeting with Oliver Dowden. <laughs> 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 Why else might Rishi Sunak be so vexed with the Greek Prime Minister? Oh, he met Keir Starmer first. Mm. Yeah. 
And Keir Starmer, amazingly, got through 30 minutes without being told, fuck you, Keir. <laughs> <laughs> That's Greek again. <laughs> and then in the House of Commons, it meant that Keir Starmer could do the Rishi's lost his marbles. Oh. <laughs> oh. Danny, my question to you, is Keir Starmer sexy? No. <laughs> It's a recent oh, shot of no. the Labour leader. Is that a hostage video? <laughs> <laughs> he is adopting the tried and tested Christine Keeler pose. <laughs> and is that shaft of light coming in through the window or shining out of his arse? That's the question. <laughs> what is the Labour Party's policy on returning the marbles? They're very much going to look into it. Yeah, I was going to ask you. It's the same policy on everything. Yeah, work in progress. Yeah. Aren't they in favour of, like, a kind of permanent loan? Is that what they've been talking about? I don't about? think the Greeks want to loan very much, cos no. they say, you can't loan it to us cos it's ours. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, we should give them six months, right? So <laughs> six months, and if you can steal them back, they're yours. <laughs> George Osborne is the chairman of the British Museum. What's his big idea for what to do with the Elgin marbles? Is he going to privatise them? <laughs> outsource them to the Cayman Islands? <laughs> And the ones that have got limbs missing, he's going to take the benefits of it. <laughs> 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 Technically, he wants to lend the marbles back to the Greek government for a period of time. In other news, what are the viewers of I'm a Celebrity getting annoyed about? Nigel Farage's fans feel that he's not getting enough airtime. Haven't we seen his bottom? I loved that. I mean, God, from... How clever was that? <laughs> I mean, to be honest, we saw his Elgin marbles the other day. <laughs> <laughs> a number of viewers have been complaining that Nigel Farage has been edited out of recent episodes by lefty ITV bosses. <laughs> you wait till you see the edit here. <laughs> <laughs> his lawyer sent a letter complaining that ITV broke its contract by giving viewers a glimpse of Nigel's naked asshole last week. <laughs> Well, if he'd signed a no arsehole contract, he wouldn't have been able to go. <laughs> <laughs> Any lawyer will tell you that. Any lawyer will tell that. I mean, the suggestions are that maybe he could do a calendar next year. <laughs> well, like Cliff Richard. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Cliff doesn't do a naked calendar, does he? No, no but he's still doing a calendar. Yeah. And that in itself is a bit of a worry. <laughs> But it's his age, you know. He only does six months at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Immigration is becoming an even bigger issue in the Conservative yeah. Party. Figures on the right of the party are all wading in with their solutions. What are some of the ideas? The problem with migration is not the illegal migration, which is a tiny number, which is going down the boat. It's the huge amount of legal migration, which is largely financed by the fact that we don't have enough people to work in the industries that people want to have them like care homes. Did you see who else we've got a shortage of, apparently? Graphic designers. Have you seen oh. the show? <laughs> 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 what about Lee Anderson? What was his idea for reducing immigration into the UK? Set fire to the channel. <laughs> <laughs> no, he suggested asylum seekers should be sent to the Orkneys. Oh, mm. oh, yeah. Which, I don't know if you know, big man, is still in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> what did Lee Anderson reveal recently? He claimed he'd been offered a lot of money to defect to respect. Defect. Is it reform? Yeah, reform. reform, is it reform, is it called? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, it's yeah. the tie slot. That's right, yeah. Who was speaking at one of his road shows called Lagers with Lee. Oh. Good, we missed out on that one. It's not exactly female friendly. Women are allowed to drink lager now, though. <laughs> According to The Sun, a spokesman said last week that Lee Anderson is a plank. <laughs> in his defence, he might be a plank, but he did ask quite a good question in the Select Committee about immigration. How many people travelling on small boats that's been refused asylum have been sent to a third country or back to their own country? of the past three years? I don't think we have. I, don't, I, don't, I think we'll, we'll, we'll write to the Gracie with those numbers, Mr Anderson. Do we have any figures about anything? <laughs> <laughs> How many were sent back last month? Have you got... Incoming. <laughs> 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 
To be honest, we're just ordering lunch now, so... <laughs> <laughs> he knew when he flicked those papers, there was no shit written in those papers. <laughs> he knew that. I love that we did that, where he just panicked and he went, uh, incoming. Yeah. And I just think, I'm going to use that with my wife. Like, literally, when she goes, why haven't you put the bins out? I'll go, incoming. <laughs> and then just, uh, there for a bit. Finally, do you want to see two posh white uncles kicking off? Yes. It was all going down at the COVID inquiry when Michael Gove and Keith, the barrister, were having a go at each other. It was like mixed martial arts. I note, uh, Mr Keith, that you want us to keep our answers brief, but if it's also the case that you want them to be answered effectively, then I'll have to go on at some length. <laughs> Mr Gove, like what, a, what a... Us here, Mr Keith. I've um, heard some interorum threats in my time, but that, that I'm afraid to take the business. Mr Keith, is there a different way to answer Yes. Um, I'm, I'm going to read. I, would, I would say it was a promise, not a threat. <laughs> I think we can all admit that's the most violent thing we've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is the diplomatic row over the Elgin Marbles where Rishi Sunak snubbed the Greek PM before he returned to Athens. The Greeks have accused Rishi of playing politics to win votes. That's an offensive and outrageous accusation because Rishi Sunak has consistently demonstrated that he has absolutely no intention <laughs> of ever winning an election. <laughs> As the diplomatic round unfolded, the mail said the Greek Prime Minister was in high dudgeon. Is that near Watford? <laughs> <laughs> For that gig there, that is a shithole. <laughs> yeah. Although he didn't meet Rishi Sunak, the Greek Prime Minister did have a discussion about the Elgin marbles with Sakir Starmer. And after 45 minutes, he said, you know what, just keep them, mate, I've got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Ross, take a look at this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's writing another book. Oh, look, uh, that's what Harry's got us over. <laughs> <laughs> There's somebody surprised at the contents <laughs> and wondering why they're reading it in a field surrounded by windmills. Um, yes, it's Prince Harry. There's a new book about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle has been written, and uh, there's some controversy because it talks about uh, some members of the royal family asking Meghan what colour the, her baby might be. Yeah, this is the news that the royal family bicker, fight and don't like spending time together, something we can all finally relate to. Um, <laughs> well, what the big problem with Omid Scobie's book is, apart from the picture of his annoying face on the back cover, is that Scobie is a friend <laughs> and ally... That's quite tough. <laughs> I don't know the brother, so if he wants to fight, he's going to have to find me in Coventry. So, uh, <laughs> Scobie is a friend and ally of Meghan and Harry, so as one critic wrote, it's quite one-sided, <laughs> especially Chapter 7, where Kate cuts down the sycamore gap tree. <laughs> <laughs> Who might be angry with Scobie about the book? The rest of the royal family, I suppose. Yeah. Prince Charles. Oh, sorry, King Charles. King Charles. I'm a Spaniel, Spaniel. Have you, King, are Charles. You, <laughs> King Charles. Are you behind on the crown? I'm in behind. Have you not got to that bit. That's <laughs> I haven't watched you? the crown, I'm afraid. Oh, no, yeah. I don't bother. Well, with that. spoiler alert, she dies at the end. <laughs> <laughs> His publishers are quite annoyed because they've had to pulp all yeah. the Dutch translation. They accidentally, on purpose, to boost PR for the book, included the name of the royal who speculated on Archie's skin tone. There, there, was there two, are two names. There was two names. And two members of the royal family. They appear in the Dutch translation. Oh, what would their initials be, then? Um... H-R-H. Well, they've already been... <laughs> uh, they've already been named by Piers Morgan. But yeah. Piers named them on talk TV, so no-one still knows who they are. Yeah. <laughs> It's like keeping it to himself, isn't it? <laughs> You're right to mention Piers Morgan. He was the one that was absolutely furious, saying that Omid Scobie was a Weasley lickspittle making a living from peddling garbage <laughs> about the royals. <laughs> and we all know that's Piers' job. The Daily Mail... <laughs> The Daily Mail also criticises the book for depicting the royals as pantomime villains, although with Andrew, it's always helpful to hear someone shout, he's behind you. <laughs> Chris Rock, the American comedian, said he's mixed race, and he said that in our families, everybody always discusses this. Both yeah. sets of in-laws say, how dark is it going to be, how light is it going to be, yeah. this is what happens. So even the revelation, and it was on opera as well. Oprah. Uh, Oprah. <laughs> Her career's only over when the fat lady sings. <laughs> what else did Scobie accuse William and Kate of? Being next in line to the throne. <laughs> <laughs>
Richard. He says they manipulated the press to attack Harry and Meghan, later accusing William and Kate of showy stunts. <laughs> Another lazy misprint. <laughs> <laughs> what other controversial royal is set to return to the BBC? Prince Philip. <laughs> 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 On Gardner's question time, yeah. he's going to crawl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is the ghost of Prince Philip going to be the new host of Top Gear? Because <laughs> <laughs> he was crashing cars all the time, wasn't he? <laughs> It's turned out Damien Lewis is reprising his role as Henry VIII in a BBC adaptation of Wolf Hall. Oh, oh. Although, as the Mail pointed out, Claire Foy, who played Anne Boleyn, will not be back following her character's <laughs> beheading. <laughs> yeah, that's serious. <laughs> oh, that could have been a brilliant ventriloquist act. Yeah, yeah. I could have had the thing <laughs> under there. Where is he? He's in the castle. <laughs> <laughs> what gets Camilla's eyes rolling? Ten pence of a packet of fags. <laughs> um, According to Scobie, Camilla rolls her eyes when anyone brings up topics like gender identity, unconscious racial bias, veganism, gluten-free and dairy-free options. <laughs> Ironically, she seems to have quite an intolerance. <laughs> <laughs> OK, where did Big King Charles pop up this week? Oh, at the cop. He flew to the UAE for COP28 climate change conference where he opened the summit because Pitbull was busy. Um, King Charles <laughs> is concerned about how hot the planet is getting as some members of the royal family are worried it could lead to Prince Harry's children getting substantially darker. <laughs> <laughs> This is the book Endgame, written by royal expert Omid Scobie. One revelation from the book is that Prince Edward is a germaphobe, which is awkward, as that's where most of his family comes from. <laughs> <laughs> Omid Scobie started out at American celebrity magazine Us Weekly before moving to work for Meghan on Me, Me, Me Daily. <laughs> <laughs> so to round two, the jigsaw of news. Oh. Fingers on the buzzers, teams. Here's your first one. Buzz in if you know the answer. Well, it's either people are up in arms at potholes or they don't like bald men pointing at them. <laughs> uh, I think it's about potholes. Yeah. More and more potholes are appearing and uh, the people are very angry about it. You can see he's very angry about it. <laughs> so potholes, potholes, potholes. No, no, absolutely. This is the big news that potholes are yeah. becoming an even bigger problem. According to the AA, October saw a record number of breakdowns caused by potholes. As a result, what advice have the AA given to any drivers worried about potholes? Avoid them. <laughs> Drive slowly around them. This is boring, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, is it? Dear, oh, dear. <laughs> is, is it? Yeah. Peer oh. that bald man to sit on the front of your car yeah. and point at them as yeah. he sees them. <laughs> There's one! Yeah. Ooh, that right? yeah. Buy a bald man. He's called Paul. Paul. Paul the pointing pothole. Practitioner. That's what he's called. <laughs> uh, listen, I wish it was Paul, but the AA have advised that drivers should avoid driving over puddles. OK, unfortunately, puddles is a local clown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and every time he gets driven over... Ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I think the A should they should get back to roads. Stop talking about clown homicide. <laughs> <laughs> they should stick to helping people to give up alcohol. Exactly. <laughs> it's some exciting news. Uh, uh, back to the roads. Earlier this month, Rishi Sunak pledged an extra eight point three billion pounds to tackle the scourge of potholes. He then put out this accompanying tweet. My God. Oh. oh, if you're in a hole, keep digging, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I tell you, that brother on the far right ain't getting in no holes. I tell you that right no. now. <laughs> what was GB's news reaction to the advice of avoiding puddles? Is it this? Oh, are we, are we on air? <laughs> anyone watching? <laughs> oh, it's ridiculous. It's PC gone mad. <laughs> you can't even, can't even smash up a car. And all the cars are foreign. <laughs> <laughs> On the subject of GB News, who is set to join their hallowed lineup? Any guesses? Boris Johnson is. Is it Cyril Braverman? No, it's more exciting than that. It's uh, the news hound and journalistic heavyweight, Peter Andre. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> Good Lord. You see, that's the thing. Peter Andre has only been booked because they're so obsessed with trans issues and they know that he sings about a mysterious girl. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, we can't just skate over this. Peter Andre <laughs> is joining. <laughs> Peter Andre <laughs> is joining GB News. He wow. said that he's going to help discuss his own issues with mental health. Wow. But why is he on GB News then? <laughs> they don't want that. They say, pull What's... your socks up, you bloody flaky libtard. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you a bit worried that that's going to go up against loose women? <laughs> Oh, my God. Are, are, you are you suggesting that Peter Andre goes up against loose women? <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. Here's your next one. Uh, is that Canadian? The Canadian super pig? Yeah, this is the news that America is under threat from a new breed of super pigs. But what yeah. makes them super pigs? They can uh, fly, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And you don't know that it's a super pig because normally they just wear glasses. <laughs> and then you go, oh, it's just a regular pig, and then he takes it off. And you're, oh my God, it's super pig. <laughs> um, yeah, they're highly intelligent, aren't they? They're mad, these super pigs. This is a bit worrying that this is the only bit of news I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like that through the paper, boring, boring. Super pig? <laughs> yeah, they, they um, live in pigloos where they burrow into. Yeah, I swear this is true. They, <laughs> It's not that it's true, it's just that you know it. Yeah, 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 yeah but... Is a pig loo made of ice or made of mud or what? Well, it's made of ice, but they're getting smarter, so they're going to make them out of straw, then wood, <laughs> then brick. <laughs> and that's how smart they are. They're domesticated pigs that have bred with wild ones, creating feral hogs that can weigh up to 150 stone. <gasps> How do you stop a super pig? You can't stop a super pig. Bro, there is one last hope. Experts are using net guns fired from helicopters. <laughs> Failing that, if you can guide them into an American high school, there's a 50% chance they'll get shot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, just... Sorry, there's somebody in my ear. Saying this isn't a real story. <laughs> <laughs> I never had one of the earpieces in before. Good. It's like intrusive thoughts, but like that are happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really hard when you're talking and they're talking. Yeah, it's proper, like, it's, it's really weird. Like, it's all quite sensible stuff, but if somebody said, pull your dick out, I'd pull my dick out right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's dangerous stuff. <laughs> always, always good to get the excuses in early. <laughs> <laughs> This is the new breed of super pig invading the US from Canada. One news report describes the animal as a 120 stone pig with a voracious sexual appetite taking over America. <laughs> it was bad enough when you got in last time. <laughs> time now for the missing words round, which this week features as its guest publication, Pirate Plunder. <laughs> The magazine for the pirate brethren of the British Isles. If you sense that someone's reading it over your shoulder, that'll be your parrot. <laughs> we start with... In 1943, the editor of the pirate plunder, Captain Davy, slipped his moorings and what? Sailed off into the sunset. Jenny, you're almost there. Sailed down the canal to begin his voyage on the great sea oh. of life. Do canals traditionally run into the sea? Is there a lot of piracy on canals? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Teddington Dock. <laughs> yeah. Oh, give me your treasure. Go! <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Well, next, Bristol Airport criticised for what? Criticised for its terrible church in the car park. Yeah, I'm going to give you that, broski. So, Bristol Airport has been criticised for installing a multi-faith area in a bus shelter. Let's have a look. <laughs> no! <laughs> what are the bollards for? To stop you thinking it's a drive through <laughs> Good point. It's nothing worse when I'm having a bit of a prey. <laughs> oh. Passes the window, says, I'm two Hail Marys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just, just a yeah. vicar with a thing on like that. What well, can I get for you? <laughs> can I get for you? Dri drive by confessional. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of wanking! <laughs> <laughs> How brilliant is it that people of all faiths now have somewhere they can pray that their car isn't broken into <laughs> while they're away on holiday? 
<laughs> I spoke to somebody that worked at Heathrow, and apparently the multi-faith prayer room is a hotbed of filth. <laughs> That's where people sneak away to um, shout, Oh, God, oh, God. <laughs> Please be. Oh. We have lift off. Yes. <laughs> Next, if you want to see a parrot in a waistcoat, what? Take magic mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Watch snooker in the 80s. Yes, yeah. John Parrot. John Parrot. Yeah. Oh, no, that's, that's brilliant. brilliant. Parrot, no, that's yeah. good rep. If you want to see a parrot in a waistcoat, come to Parrot Waistcoat World, just off the <laughs> M25 near High Wycombe. <laughs> Apparently, if you want to see a pirate in a waistcoat, head to the Swanage Pirate Festival. This is an article from Pirate Plunder magazine, <laughs> and here is a pirate in a waistcoat. <laughs> there he is. Mm. I would say that was more of a gilet. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, woman mistakes husband's pants for what? <laughs> ghost of Anne Boleyn. <laughs> it's got to be a ghost, isn't it? No, uh, woman mistakes husband's pants for a burglar coming up the stairs. How? <laughs> oh, we're about to find out. Okay. This is a woman in West Sussex who mistook a shadow for a burglar. Here are his pants. There you go. Yeah. And here is the shadow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... No. I mean, it's a bit burglary. Okay, but for... No. It's a bit burglary. I mean... No, unless you're going to be... I think you're being burgled by a miniature Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> So the final scores are Ian and Janet have six. Oh, Paul and Ross have eight. But before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. Loose women, Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> Is it um, Bishop complains about unfair identity parade? Mm. <laughs> Another terrible edition of Hide That Camel. <laughs> <laughs> There's one bonus one. Woman complains about unfairness of identity parade. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the best episode ever of Hide That Camel? <laughs> 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 On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Janet Street Porter, Paul Merton and Ross Noble, and I leave you with the news that in California, on a visit to a fertility clinic, Prince Harry is accused of having a rather cavalier attitude to some precious IVF samples. <laughs> <laughs> in Downing Street, Rishi Sunak watches his wife's accountants put the finishing touches on her tax return. <laughs> And there's joy all around amongst care home staff as one resident manages to colour in a picture without going over the lines. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>From the Trafalgar Square Christmas tree to COP28, join the newscast team for the latest episode now on BBC Sounds and the rapid rise and violent fall of a political powerhouse. Press red for Julius Caesar, the making of a dictator on iPlayer.